Titus chapter 2 and verses 4 and 5. And so train the young women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled, pure, working at home, kind, and submissive to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be reviled. What I want to share with you is about God's plan for women in the home. God's plan for women in the home. Once more, let's come before the Lord and pray that God may prepare our hearts, especially the hearts of the mothers or the wives. Because this might be something that they may not respond to very well. Because this is so contrary to our culture, contrary to the way they've been raised, contrary to their uh, view regarding their roles in the home. So let's come before God and ask for His grace. Father, please uh, open our minds and open our hearts that we may realize that what we're dealing with right now is Your Word. This is not just some human counsel, but this is your word and this reveals to us your will for our lives and especially for women. We pray that you may give humility to all of us. You may help us, Lord, to have a high view of Scripture. And we pray, Lord, that you may continue to move upon our hearts so that the necessary changes, the necessary uh, adjustments that need to be done will be done with a heart of cheerfulness and a heart of submission to you. Lord, speak to all of us and move in our midst right now. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Uh, for those who are here for the first time, I'd like to remind you that we are going through a series in uh, this book of Paul, to, or this letter of Paul to Titus. And we are now, particularly in chapter 2, looking at the different age and gender groups in the church. And he addresses uh, the older men, the older women, the young women, the young men, and all sorts of people inside the church. And it is in this chapter that we find a very practical counsel from God. Very practical counsel from the Apostle Paul. And in chapter 2 verse 1, he already said that Titus is to teach what accords with sound doctrine. So he didn't just say here that uh, Titus, you are to teach sound doctrine. No, he says teach what is in accord with sound doctrine. So we've seen several studies on that, and we, we have discovered that this is talking about practical matters. So we've looked at practical concerns, and we are now in the area of looking at God's will for young women. We've learned that the Lord wants older women to instruct young women to do certain things. And these are the things that we're looking at right now. Now we come to a portion in our study where... Possible, ito na yung kumbaga natatakot yung mga tao na pakinggan itong message na ito dahil sinasabi nila nako ito na yung portion na parang mukhang mahirap na itong sundin because it's already talking about women's roles in the home. Now before looking into this in detail, I just like to read to you what a certain commentator wrote just to prepare this message. His name is Jay Hampton Keithley the third. Pakinggan niyo yung kanyang sinabi at uh, maganda itong paghahanda para sa ating lahat. He said, Though we aren't told this directly, in view of the fact that the false teachers were overturning whole families, that's what you find in Titus chapter 1, verse 11, it would appear the false teachers were teaching things that were undermining God's roles for husbands and wives particularly for the women. This is not new and the battle rages today as never before. So, what he's trying to say is that possibly the reason why the Apostle Paul is addressing this issue regarding women's roles in the home. It's because they have been influenced. The, the families have been influenced by the false teachers in the previous chapter. 
Remember that Paul was addressing false teachers and that was the reason why uh, Titus had to appoint elders in the church? Because the false teachers were disrupting the Christian families because of their false teachings. They were turning their backs from the faith and they were doing things that were not pleasing in the eyes of God. And possibly wives or mothers were influenced by the false teachers. Maybe they were taught that the home is not important, they can just do anything and disregard the home altogether. So ito marahil yung nangyayari rito. Now let's move on. Keith Lee also says, There was a time in this country, he was referring to, to America, when it was taken for granted that a dignified and competent wife and mother, devoted to her home and family, was highly desirable, constant in American culture. So meron daw panahon na talagang ang isipan ng mga tao na para sa babae, para sa nanay, importante ang tahanan. Ang focus ng kanyang attention sa bahay, sa tahanan. But this is no longer the case. Home economics used to be an important major or part of the college curriculum for women, but no more. That's very interesting. Ganun pala noon, ganun pala ang pananaw nila noon sa home economics. Importante pala, that was a major course at that time in the United States. The demise of home economics is indicative of a significant transformation in the thought patterns and habits of women standing at the edge of adult life today. Although elementary education, Christian education, nursing, and even home economics are still studied, these degrees are often chosen for their professional and domestic value. Tama! Noon, kung may nursing noon, iniisip nila yon para ma-apply ko sa aking bahay, sa aking tahanan, so that I can apply it at home. But today, when people, when women or men take nursing as a course, it's more for economic reasons. Women make academic decisions about coursework and majors with little thought of the value of specific areas of knowledge for running a home, raising a family, or educating children. Instead, the marketability of the degree is primary. Not surprisingly, in a culture, and in a culture that disparages motherhood, we see a decline of conscious preparation for this task by women making academic, financial, and career decisions. Dahil bumaba ang pagtingin ng mga tao sa bahay. No, nawala na. Wala na ngayong kumukuha ng kurso ng mga babae para isipin, paano ito makakatulong para ayusin ko ang aking tahanan? Paano ito makakatulong para palakihin ang aking mga anak? Nawala na yun. Pag mag-aaral ngayon, if women or men are going to study right now in our academic institutions, it's all pertaining to ano ba ang kurso na malaki kita? What course will cause me to have bigger salary? Yun ang kanilang iniisip ngayon. Pera, pera, pera. Pero yung sinasabi na salita ng Panginoon na tutukan o mag-aral ka para ikaw ay matuto kung papano to become a better wife, a better husband, wala nang ganong klasing mga kurso. And so, it's very important na makita natin ito. Maganda na maibalik tayo dito sa ganitong klaseng perspective. I got this from another source. I, I, I'm sorry, I was not able to find out kung sino yung sungul na to. But this is just a contrast uh, between a world's view and God's view pertaining to the home. World's view. Home is a boring drudgery. Nakakatamad doon sa bahay. Puro mga household chores and all of these sorts. But God's view is, home is a haven to come to from the world. World's view, homemaking and children are a burden. God's view, children are God's good gifts. World's view, value, material success, and self-gratification now. God's view, value, character, and godliness, and invest in the future. World's view, Place children in child care. God's view. Parents teach and fulfill their responsibilities to train their children. World's view. 